Good day! In this short video, we will have a look at the recording of a transaction in the Cash Receipts Journal. The Cash Receipts Journal is used when a business receives cash and deposits the cash into the bank account of the business. Let's look at an example. Duma Stores is situated in the Limpopo province. The business is a registered VAT vendor and applies the principles of the periodic inventory system. During the month of March 2024, Duma Stores maintained a favourable bank balance. The VAT rate is 15%. On 5 March 2024, the cash sales of Duma Stores amounted to 23,000 Rand, VAT inclusive. The source document was the cash register role number two. We are required to record this transaction in the correct subsidiary journal of Duma Stores. The accounts affected by this transaction is the bank account because the business received cash, the sales account because the business sold goods, and the VAT output account since the business now owes the value added tax on the taxable supplies, which was the sales the business made. If we now look at the bank account, the total amount on the cash register roll was 23,000 Rand. That is the amount of cash that the business physically received and it is inclusive of value added tax. The amount recorded in the bank account for a registered VAT vendor will always be the amount inclusive of VAT. If we now record this transaction in the cash receipts journal, we will first record the document number, which was the cash register roll 2. Therefore, you will see CRR2 in the document column. Then the day was the 5th of March. In the details column, we will write cash since this was sales from the cash register roll. In the analysis of receipts column, we will write an amount of 23,000 Rand. The analysis of receipts column is used where multiple deposits or cash transactions occurs on a day, then all of those are written in in the analysis of receipts column. The column is totaled and the total amount is then written in the bank column. And the amount written in the bank column will then correspond to your deposit slip when you deposit the money into the business bank account. For this example, we only had one transaction. Therefore, the analysis of receipts column will have a total of 23,000 Rand written in it and the bank column will have a total of 23,000 Rand written in it. Let's have a look at the sales account. When a registered VAT vendor makes taxable supplies, they must add 15% value added tax to the amount they charge for whatever supply they make. But the income they earn will then be the amount exclusive of VAT and the 15% VAT is then owed to the South African Revenue Services. Therefore, when we record sales in the cash receipts journal, we must record an amount exclusive of VAT. In order to calculate this, for our transaction, we need to take the amount that was inclusive of value-added tax and work backwards to get the exclusive amount. Therefore, we say 23,000 Rand divided by 115 times 100 equals 20,000 Rand. In the sales column, we will then record 20,000 Rand, which will be the VAT exclusive amount. The last account that was affected is the VAT output account. Our amount given was inclusive of VAT. Therefore, we need to calculate the VAT amount as follows. 23,000 Rand divided by 115 times 15 equals 
3,000 Rand. The amount of 3,000 Rand will now be written into the VAT output column. Since accounting works on a double entry principle, if you now look at this entry in the cash receipts journal, you will see the bank account, which we would have debited on the accounting equation, is equal to the sales account plus the VAT output account, which would have been the two accounts that's credited on the accounting equation. You should now be able to record a cash sales transaction in the cash receipts journal of a registered VAT vendor. Thank you for watching.